Sometimes a good team can play just okay and still beat a bad team handily. Avs win over the Chicago Blackhawks 5 to nothing. Look, I don't think the Avs played their A game. Honestly, they probably didn't even play their B game in this one, but they played well enough. Particularly, Alexander Georgiev gave Chicago nothing, and that allowed the Avs to flounder around a bit at times in this game and get away with it. And while throughout the game, the Avs eventually would put things together and make this an easy one, the first period was a bit rough at times. A good amount of sloppy and sketchiness, but you know what? A lot of parts of this game, you can pretty much quantify as you take those. Less than three minutes in, the Avs get one you absolutely take. Avs with possession early here. First of all, as the skitters wide, great job by Matt Nieto. Working hard, deep in the zone, taking contact, fighting through it, and continuing to control the puck for Colorado. This play does not happen without Matt Nieto there. The rest of this one is simple. Uh, Brad Hunt gives this to Curtis McDermott. Curtis McDermott attempts to take something akin to a shot, but it's going to hit this guy in the knee. This guy. The net is barely even in the frame. You can't even... There's so much room between this guy and shooting the puck on net. And yet, going off of his knee, it kicks directly in. Either that's the luckiest goal for the Avs we're going to see this season, or Chicago is so good at tanking that was on purpose and they're actively sabotaging themselves. In which case, props. Chicago is really good at tanking. The scales did balance a little bit when Nathan McKinnon watched Alex Delock make his best save of the year on him with the paddle, so at least there's a little bit of balance there. And really, you kind of just muddled your way through this first period where the Avs end up 1-0 after it. And while against a better team, you're probably not happy with the way Colorado played that first period, against Chicago, it's kind of just fine. Sure, you would like them to play better, but 1-0 on the scoreboard is something you can live with. We've talked a lot this year about the Avs not executing and converting opportunities. Really, it was Chicago in this game that didn't convert their opportunities. And in the second period, the period as a whole was actually quite slow for Colorado, but you get about five minutes in, they play a portion of hockey where they remember that they're just better than Chicago, and from there, the game was pretty easy. The easiness in no small part thanks to Dennis Mulgan. The old Avs specialty here, a great job by Mulgan to collect the puck, throw it to open space, and then chase it back down to get the Avs out of their zone and on the rush quickly. It's not really an odd man rush, but it's a great job by Mulgan to use the puck, get to the middle, and drag everyone to him. That opens up space for the drop to Nachushkin. Initially, they do the little uh, crisscross weave, whatever you want to call it, and for some reason, they get Stalak to commit very, very high. I don't know if this is a great deke by Nachushkin or if Stalak just was out of position here, whatever. Not too worried about it. Nuke is able to slide this one back to Mulgan, and because of Stalock's poor positioning, Mulgan can kind of do whatever he wants here. He has a ton of net, and he's going to throw it into that net. So here's the thing. I am all here for Mulgan Mania as long as it's working, and if he continues to produce, I have zero problems with this guy continuing to play wherever you want him in the lineup. But just to temper your expectations a little bit, Mulgan with the Avs is currently shooting 17.8%. That's compared to a career number of just 10.8%. 7% over his career average. And that's no small sample size either. That's 245 games. His Corsi numbers are the best they've ever been in his career with Colorado, and some of that is getting to Colorado, which is a very good possession team, but you can also reasonably expect some personal regression there. Interestingly, though, his PDO is actually below average at just 983, his on-ice save percentage just a 905, so maybe you could actually expect goaltending to trend and help him continue to play well. Fun fact, great analysis by Colorado when they did make the Dryden Hunt for Dennis Mulgan trade. In Toronto, the on-ice shooting percentage with Mulgan on the ice was just 2%. That's just not sustainable for anybody. All this to say, I'm not ready to call Malkin a hidden gem just yet, but while he continues to be hot, continue to use him. I'm going to be honest, in games like this where the Colorado Avalanche comfortably take down their opponents at this time of the season, I'm far more interested in milestone chasing than the actual game itself. And there's plenty of that to watch with Colorado right now.
Miko picks up number 47. Check out this setup as the Evs are overloading the far side of the ice. Chicago is just not respecting Miko Rantanen at all. They're just leaving him alone in the circle on this side of the ice. I know Miko defers from shooting a lot, but he's too good of a player and shooter to just completely ignore on that side of the ice. It does eventually get over to him, and you're not even close enough to realistically challenge this shot. You're just saying, Miko, if you shoot it and score, you're better than us. And well, Miko is better than you. Yeah, when those top guys do stuff like that, that's when it's really obvious that the Avs are just better than this team. So you're up 3-0 halfway through the game. That's a game that you have to win 99 out of 100 times. Probably more often than that if you want to feel good about it. And the Avs admittedly kick it down a notch from there. They play all four lines, just roll them all the way through. Not a single forward under 10 minutes of hockey tonight. So they knew the score and they took care of business. It never got close. The only tough thing to happen here, Evan Rodriguez takes a hit, ends up getting hurt and leaves the game. Does not play in the third period. Jared Bednar says it's an upper body injury, but not a concussion, so not exactly clear. He did continue to play for a little while after the event as well, so just not sure where that's at. The third period was pretty free for the most part, but you do still get some fun in it, and more importantly, you get a guy to gain a little bit of confidence. This play is mostly Sam Gerrard. Yes, he starts out doing his twirly tornado thing at the start, but it's not that that makes the play. It's him getting down the wall, beating his one man, then, you know, the initial play here isn't great. He tries to shovel it forward. It doesn't work, but he sticks with it, continues on the man, is able to free up the puck. That allows the Avs to keep possession. Mulligan with the cutesy no-look backhand that just is enough to get through to Logan O'Connor, and that's a perfect shot. We thought we had an LOC goal a couple of games ago. It gets taken away because of a tip. This one is definitely his, and his best Miko impression. Just an absolute beautiful shot in the perfect spot. While LOC's goal scoring has not been that amazing this year, he's up to 24 points on the season. That's more than enough production from a fourth line guy. A little bit closer to the bare minimum from someone on your third line, but certainly good enough. And the Avs just keep piling on just 14 seconds later, Morgan Mania still going. So this one's pretty nonsense. A loose puck. Devon's able to get to it and keep it in the zone. Miko's going to try and throw this over to McKinnon. It goes off of a defender's skate. Kicks around. McKinnon tries to make a play with it. He mishandles it. It cuts to the middle. Morgan's able to get his stick on this, but it's not a very effective play. It ends up kicking wide off of the defender's skate and then pops up and into the net. I mean, okay, sure. A fun one and another easy one in a stretch of the season where the Avs should be racking up easy ones. They continue to put pressure on the top of the Central and honestly are pretty much hunting them down. Sure, luck was on their side tonight. We've seen plenty of games where luck is not on the Avs side. You take it when you get it, and then you go out and play your best the next night. That is the end of the game video review. Thank you for watching. Head on over to thednvr.com for all of our coverage. I am Rudo. And no, Morgan, you don't get to make me pour water on my head.